Thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black, licensed real estate broker with Affordable Homes and Apartments. And I'm licensed to preach and ordained as a minister. And I have my PhD in Sacred Biblical Studies. Thank you for joining me today. I'm still going to talk a little bit about the giant inside of you is bigger than the giant in front of you. Okay, and again, this is available on bondsandnobles.com or www.bn.com as well as um, it's, uh, it's on uh, lulu.com as well as my website booksgaloreandmore.com and it's on uh, uh, Kindle Publishing, uh, mostly a lot of online uh, publication sites and at a bookstore near you. Now today we'd like to talk to you just touching on a few of the subjects that we haven't or that we can actually expound on. Uh, this particular topic is found in chapter 3 and uh, it's entitled, You Cannot Fight a Spiritual Battle in the Physical, but you can fight a physical battle in the spiritual. Okay, let me say that again. You cannot fight a spiritual battle in the physical but you can fight a physical battle in the spiritual. Okay, and I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You. And again, I'm coming from my book, The Giant Inside of You is Bigger Than the Giant in Front of You. Okay, and this book is derived from the scripture, Greater is he that lives within me than he that lives within the world. Okay, uh, now we're going to talk about you can't fight a spiritual battle. But to give you a little insight on the book itself, the book actually talks pretty much about fighting. Uh, fighting the giants that come against us in all shape, form, and fashion. Uh, in the form of situations, circumstances, people, places, things, or even ourselves. Sometimes we can get in our own way. But I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that there's a God that lives high and sits low. And he's the one who consulted me on this book. The giant inside of you is bigger than the giant in front of you. So what I'm saying is that we are actually stronger and more powerful, and we have much more authority and more strength and ability and stamina and, and what have you to defeat these giants that come against us. Any of the giants, all of them. And when I say defeat them, I don't mean necessarily always beating them down to the ground, getting rid of them, you know, eliminating them from the face of the earth or whatever, or hurting them up so bad that they'll never come back. No, I'm not I'm talking about, you know, that kind of defeat all the time. But in essence, we're actually getting the same results. You're actually knocking your opponent out for the count for good, you know, you've actually won that fight, you know, when, you, when you're succeeding at it. You've actually, uh, you know, conquered the situation when you, you're beating them down, but you're not beating them down physically, okay, because there are ways that we can attack our giants, of course, in the spiritual. And that's mostly how you're going to be successful. Now, I'm not saying that you just stand there and let them slap you, okay, if you're in the surrender of a situation and somebody's there you know, putting their hands on you or whatever, or if they're talking harshly to you or even cursing you out. You know, you don't, I don't believe that you should stand there and just let it happen. Somebody's words have to be used at that point. So that's why we have to be prayed up and, and spirited up in order to know and be prepared for that battle. Because in essence, that's a battle. You're ensuing a battle right there when you are being faced with an opposing po opponent who is of evil and of wickedness, and not of God. See, because we stand for righteousness. Christians stand for righteousness. And everything that comes with it, that God offers us, that he gives us as children of God. But the people who, a lot of people, not all of them, but some of them that come against us, are in fact serving the other God, the devil, and his worshipers and his workers of iniquity, the beast of the field, and the evil doers. Okay, so we're, uh, we're already on opposing forces, because... The devil hated God, okay, and he was regarded as the prettiest angel in heaven, called Lucifer, okay, and he showed his behind and got put out, along with a lot of other fallen angels. But we are constantly engaging in spiritual forces of, of darkness and evil in the heavenly realms. Spiritual battles are sometimes invisible to the naked eye, but nevertheless just as real as the ones that we can see. Since we battle spiritual forces, we have to use spiritual forces to combat these giants. Knives and guns and harsh words sometimes won't even calm the situation down or even put a scratch on your enemy. Okay? So that's what I said. You know, we have to use spiritual forces. If somebody's fighting you, you know, hitting you, putting their hands on you or whatever, 
You know, I would say if it's appropriate, now you're analyzing the situation. First of all, is this a cop? Is this somebody in authority that has a gun? Okay, fighting back physically would not be a good idea. However, yes, you can attack them in the spiritual, and then you can also do a physical act on them as well. Take them to court, sue them, what have you. You know, and your battle is on your knees. I think that's where our real battle is, is on our knees, because, you know, we have to, you know, constantly be engaged. We have to be prepared for the battle. We have to be prepared for the war. You know, we have to be prepared for those who are coming against us in all shapes, form, or fashions, honey, and they come disguised. I just told you, you know, the last time we spoke that, you know, the, um, the, our giants come in different shapes, form, and fashions. Oh, they can. They come disguised as your neighbor. They come disguised as your friend, your co-worker, your employee. Uh, they come disguised as people in political forces, government heads, and what have you, okay? But nevertheless, they are still of that nature, okay? So we have to be able to recognize that, you know, just like, you know, I mean, I walk into a room and I'll, I'll see, you know, people and whatnot, and I can sense the spirit of a lot of them. And I can say a lot of them are probably no, you know, no good or not the kind of person that I would want to be involved with. Okay, I'm not saying, you know, you don't downgrade a person because they don't have what you have or what have you. You know, you, you want somebody who's got something to offer and they don't have nothing to offer. So, you know, they're caught up in that situation for whatever reason. You know, they could be suffering as a slave to sin, which means they're suffering for causing their own sin to come upon them. Okay, so they're in lack all the time because of the sin they're in. Okay. And, you know, that's, it says it in the Bible. I'm not making it up, you know. And so, you know, they, that's the reason when once they, you know, decide and, and God accepts them as a child of God, then, yes, of course, you got to go through Jesus first. Then you say to yourself, hey, well, now, you know, I'm coming to the Lord. You know, I want to come to him. And now you're asking God to now make you a child of God. Okay, like I said before, it doesn't mean you're going to not suffer anymore. You know, you're suffering, you were suffering as a slave to sin before you got saved. And now you're suffering as a slave to righteousness. Nevertheless, you're going to suffer. If everybody in this world was righteous and holy and kind and nice and peaceful, this would be a great place to live, wouldn't it? Saved or not. You know, you could have, you know, people that are nice to you all the time. You could have anything you want. The whole world would prosper. Because everybody is always nice and godly. Not necessarily saved, but of a godly nature. Nice, kind, peaceful, you know, sort of practicing some of the, the fruits of the Spirit here. Uh, so, you know, when we fight our spiritual battle, our physical battles, you know, okay, like for instance, go to court to court. When I'm taking people to court, I, I pray. I pray. I don't pray as much as I pray, but I pray. I do pray. And, and I don't always do the conventional prayer of praying. You know, I consider conventional praying when you get on your knees and you at your bedside. You know, that's not the only place where you can pray in your house. I give you permission to pray in the, your entire house and not just at your bedside on your knees when you get ready to go to bed at night. Okay, or when you want to meditate, or at, on your on your knees uh, at your bedside at any time of the day or night, you can pray. You can you can pray in the kitchen. You can pray. I give you permission to pray in the kitchen, the dining room, living room, your bathroom, laundry room, anywhere you want. I give you permission to pray in your car. You see what I'm saying? So you know, there's different ways that we can praise and worship God, and so that He can hear us. You know, so that we can invoke. These spiritual powers, these spiritual forces. And we're going to talk a little bit about what some of those forces are. Okay, it's probably going to be a two-part and uh, maybe a more than one part. It's going to be more than one part, I know, for sure. Now, just to give you where I'm headed at in this particular topic of you cannot fight a spiritual battle in the physical, but you can fight a physical battle in the spiritual. Okay, and there are variations, of course, you know, um, the basis of the topics that which I'm going to talk about that's going to envelope this particular uh, subject matter, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the breastplate of righteousness, okay, uh, all the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the armor of truth, shield of faith. We're going to be talking about spiritual warfare. That's pretty much what we're talking about today, spiritual warfare. So I can pretty much almost call it spiritual warfare. But uh, that's what we're going to be talking about in terms of uh, the subject matter, like when I come back to for part two or part three or what have you. Okay, it's a short one, but, you know, you never know. It could envelope into something a little larger, more elaborate. Okay, so, you know, there, are, like I said, there are several ways in which we can fight and win the battle and the war against our giants, okay? 
One way is to pray. Now, like I said, I give you permission to pray in any portion of your home. Keeping that line of communication open with God, I think, is very important. Okay, even if you don't feel like, you know, saying a whole lot of stuff. Because sometimes we get pretty angry, you know what I mean? We're still human. We go through emotions. Because a lot of times we don't get what we want or people just make us angry. They just, you know, they know how to tick us off. So they push that button and we let them. Okay, so now we're a walking time bomb, so we have to diffuse. Okay, so you're going to have to always keep that line of communication open with God. And I say in my car is one of my favorite places, my truck. You know, I put my gospel music on, I blast it, you know, because my car is pretty loud anyway. All four wheels are going at the same time. I got an all-wheel drive, so it makes a pretty large amount of noise. So I have to keep my radio loud, but I turn it up higher, and I sing it. I'm praising the Lord right there in my car, in my truck. Okay, I come home, I put my radio on, and I'm praising the Lord right there in my house. You know, and I'm talking to him as well. You know, so I always keep that line of communication open. I always thank him. Every morning before when I get up, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this meal. You know, I come home from work or whatever. Thank you, God, for a wonderful day at work. And I pray for tomorrow, you know, how I would, you know, help me to, you know, make tomorrow better than the day and blah, 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 whatever the situation is that you're a giant that is afflicting you or what have you and, and sort of standing in your way and preventing you from being able to do your job effectively and efficiently. And you pray over that, you know, uh, on your way to work, it might be the best place to pray. You know, when you get us to enter the house with uh, joy and thanksgiving, right? Walk in the door and say, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. <laughs> You know what I mean? You can say it right then and there as soon as you walk in the door, when you turn the corner, whatever, or when you're in the bathroom, whatever. You know, and there's all kinds of ways we have to keep that line of communication open. Because first of all, if you don't talk to God, God ain't going to talk to you. I believe. That's what I believe. You know, if you don't, if you don't be saying something, you got to com communicate with him in some way. I mean, this is a mighty, powerful God we're talking about. This is a God who can do all things. Anything but fail. You know, we're talking about a God who raised people from the dead. We're talking about a, 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 a God who who healed the blind man, made him see after he was born he was born blind and healed the man of his sight. Okay, we're talking about other people that were born for, for numbers of years. The blind man at the pool of Bethesda. We're talking about the lame, the men and women, the men and women with leprosy. Okay, we're talking about the hunchback lady. We're talking about the, the man with the withered hand. We're talking about all the woman with the issue of blood. All of the different people. We're talking about you and we're talking about me. Okay, all of the people who are going through, you know, physical giants, all of these kinds of things. Yeah, yes, you. in this case, you would have to fight it with the physical as well. But the spiritual is where you're going to really conquer the physical. See, the spiritual, what I believe, when we're fighting our battles in the spiritual forces, the spiritual forces is what's going to dominate the, 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 uh, the spiritual forces is what's going to dominate the physical force. Okay, we still have to do what we need to do in the physical. But we have to do it with a mind of discernment. Okay, not everything that comes across to you as an option is something that you should say yes to. Okay, so we are faced with dilemmas every day. Fights going on in your mind. Okay, when you lay down, sometimes you could be, you know, have, having a, a, a dream that, you know, you're fighting somebody. You're trying to, you know, something, you know, come back up to your past, come back to haunt you. Any, anyway, you don't even have to be sleeping in bed or whatever. Or something somebody did to you, you know what I mean, that's caused you. But then you say to yourself, see, what really helped you to um, feel better about the situation is that no matter what the enemy has tried to do to you, the fact that you continue to fight your battle in the spiritual as well as in the physical, okay, makes you a conqueror. Okay, okay, we're more than conquerors. Remember, we're more than conquerors. We have the ability to tread on serpents, you know. So we have a lot of ability. We have power. But the power only comes from the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. If you're serving the other gods, you're not, you don't have access to this. It's only if you serve in the one true and living God, then you have, we all have access. Those who serve him and worship him in spirit and in truth, those are the ones that have this power that I talk about in, in, in my book, The Giant Inside of You is Bigger Than the Giant in Front of You. Now, I believe that even in those who do serve other gods, you have a giant in you that's bigger than the giant in front of you. But in order for you to tap into that, you got, you got to come over to this side over here. You got to come to the winning team, baby, because this is the only way you're going to be able to win it completely and successfully. You know, like you have good success, right? Just take that for an example. When you start a business or whatever, or you go to work for somebody, you're, you're, you're having success because you're making money. Okay, but good success goes way beyond that, and that's a whole other topic. You know, good success is more foundational, I would say. You know, more foundational. 
uh, not necessarily more guaranteed, but it's more foundational. It provides more of a foundation. It allows us as children of God to take a thousand dollars and do ten times more with it than a person who does not serve God and take that same thousand dollars and what would they do with that? See, we can stretch a thousand dollars or make it go far or we, God gives us the ability to use the money and in and, and ways that, you know, that seems like we got five thousand. Okay, whereas the people who are not in the will of God, you have a thousand dollars and it, it might seem like you only got five hundred. Okay, and see that's the difference because there's a mind of discernment, there's a whole lot of things going on and these giants are coming against us constantly in all forms and shapes. You know, causing you to make that thousand dollars go so quickly that you only thought you had five hundred. On the other hand, it can, it can make you feel like you had five, you can use it and whatnot and, and abilities that a person with five thousand dollars would have been able to take advantage of. And then you only have a thousand to do it. Very resourceful. You know, God God is a God. You, you know, we're talking about, you know, I mean, the man who created heaven and earth. Okay, he created human beings from the dust of the earth. Come on now. I mean, how genius is that? Okay. Now, uh, another way to fight our spiritual growth, and there's several ways, quite a few ways, okay, to fight. Uh, another way to fight our physical battle in the spiritual, okay, is to prepare ourselves for the battle, as I had mentioned earlier. Get armored up. Okay. And you don't get armored up by saying, I'm getting armored up. That's not what I mean. Okay, so now uh, we build up our time. Okay, when a fighter prepares himself for a fight to practice, he builds his muscle, his tolerance, his strength. Okay, so that when he gets into the ring, he will be well prepared, as prepared as he can be, so that he can enable him to, to have an ability and a chance to defeat his giant, his opponent. Okay, when a singer gets prepared to sing, he or she participates Practice her singing so that she can get in front of an audience and they are in, she is in the key and she will be in full voice or he. I have made the devil many times on the job where I work at, okay, in a hostile environment, okay, by glorifying God, okay, and other things as well. Now because I prepare myself for the battle, or at least I try to, and I'm getting into the habit of doing it more and more. Realizing mostly everything that we're doing is a battle. You have to really think about what you're doing. You have to use a deductive reasoning in order to be able to, you know, efficiently and effectively evaluate your situation and be able to conquer and win it. Okay? In order to understand what went wrong then so that we can prevent it from going wrong now. You know, you might have walked in the motor vehicle and the woman cursed you out for no reason. She ain't have no right to do that. But your responsibility is to try to stay in the will of God, knowing that it's already a fight when you go in there. Somebody going to try to come against you, and if they don't, then you've had a good day. Okay, but you walk in there, and that woman comes at you and whatnot, and you curse her out. So now you got to go home, and you got to practice how to, how to do it in the spiritual. Because you're not going to win it in the physical. They might throw you out of there, or they might lock you up. You don't want that. Okay, yeah, you can say what you want to say, but you don't yell it and scream it. I know them, they were about to throw me out the motor vehicle at one time. He said, told me to get out of here. I said, not until I say what I have to say. I said, you can call the cops all you want to and have think them they, think they're going to come in here and take me out of here because I come in here to try to get some services and y'all are rude to me, you know, and whatnot. And he says, get out of here. And then he went back into the, because uh, I was outspoken. I wasn't going to let him say what he wanted to say to me. You know, I think I should. I could have said something differently. I could have used God's words instead of mine. I didn't curse him out, though. It was just the fact that I talked up. You know, so I didn't use the spiritual, uh, the uh, spiritual warfare. To, I, I used physical, so spite physical. Okay. Now I, I do believe that in some cases, yes, you could. You you you, you got to say something right then and there. You can't let them get away with you know, uh, just saying anything to you. And sometimes, you know. Is it worth it to fight? You have to determine whether it's worth it for you all the time, whether, you know, to get stooped that low, you know, and go below your, you know, where you are now. You, you were there once, and you worked your way up out of that miry clay. And now you're in for a face with somebody who's in the miry clay, and you're going to let them pull you back down in there, so you can wallow in the dirt again? Now you got to think about that and make that decision for yourself. Okay? Um... You know, people used to ask me a lot of times, sometimes I used to go to work singing and they used to ask me, you know, why are you so happy and everything like that? I said, hey, because God has gone before me and prepared the way. You know, in other words, no matter what you do to me, honey, you can't hurt me. You can't touch me. You know, you can't touch this. 
Now, 1 Peter 2, 18, 25, New Living Translation says, You who are slaves must accept the authority of your masters with all respect. Do what they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, and even if they are cruel. For God is pleased with you when you do what you know is right and patiently endure unfair treatment. Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing what is wrong. Okay? But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. For God's uh, uh, called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Suffering just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example and you must follow in his steps. He never sinned nor deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when insulted nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God. This is powerful, huh? powerful scripture. Okay? He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. Okay? He personally carried our sins, I'm talking about God, uh, Jesus, okay, in his body on the cross, so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. Okay? By his wounds we are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you, you have turned to the shepherd, the guardian of our souls. Wow, that's powerful, isn't it? And that, I just read to you uh, 1 Peter 2, 18, 25, New Living Translation. Yeah, that's hot. 2 Peter 18, 25. Okay, now we can't fight a spiritual battle in the physical, but we can't fight a physical battle in the spiritual. Now, so using this passage as an example, pretty much help, you know, should help you go along. Because what it's saying is, you know, be respectful. And I was respectful. I didn't I didn't downgrade him. I didn't uh, call him anything out of his name or whatever. You know, I just said my piece. You know, that I didn't think that it was fair that they, the way they was treating me and us, you know. Down here, I come down here to get, you know, some motor vehicle services. And I have to be treated like this? That doesn't make any sense. Why do I have to be treated ill? You know, why can't you treat me with respect? Don't, don't, you all teach, don't they teach you about respect? You know. And so he was like, he just didn't like the fact that I was outspoken. Okay, but what this is saying is, and I, I, I practice it, I really do try to practice it, you know, because first of all, what I really want to do to somebody who's, who's like yelling and screaming at me is not talk, okay, I ain't ready, I, I ain't ready to talk right there at that point, you know, talking is the last thing on my mind, so I keep my mouth shut, see, because sometimes I say I'm afraid, but I'm afraid sometimes of my own ability, baby, I don't know what I might be capable of doing. You know, because I, I, you know, I was out there in the streets. I was running the streets at one time. So I could, you know, I'm capable of doing anything. So you have to keep restrain yourself. You have to force yourself. You have to stay in the will of God because it is God, the strength that lies within us from God and from the Holy Spirit that's going to help control you in those situations. It's going to help keep you out of that kind of trouble. That's why we follow his instructions and it will work every time. I always follow the instructions. When the animal people came in my house and whatnot and knocked on my door and barged in my house and started searching my house illegally, you know, I let them in. I answered their questions. I was cooperative with them. I don't believe I had to do that, though, but I did. Uh, matter of fact, they was already in, so what was I going to say? They had guns. You don't argue with somebody with a gun in their holster. Okay? So I was respectful, you know, but I was normally was going to be respectful anyway. But then it got to the point where, you know, she just kept being so disrespectful to me and everything, and I just couldn't stand it anymore. And suddenly, I didn't hear her voice yelling at me. I heard somebody else yelling, screaming at me. They used to scream at me when I was a child. And, honey, I just almost snapped. I said something out of my mouth that uh, was very believable. Okay, I didn't threaten, you know, to kill her or nothing like that, but I told her what I was going to do if she didn't get out of my house. And what I had that I could defend myself with. And she looked at him and I yelled in the screen. I said, well, if y'all don't want to leave, I said, I'm getting out of here. I said, because I'm not going to stand here in my house and let you yell and scream at me. I said, this is my house and you don't come in here and violate nothing. Two, 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 I started walking away. Oh, we have other houses to go to. Okay. And they left. But that wasn't the finish of it. But the bottom line was that I, I was respectful to them. So, and God will... You know, he's, he's very pleased with us when we are. And what does that mean when God is pleased with you? You know, he, 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 he shines his favor down upon us. You know, when you don't see a way, God makes a way. 
You know, that's his favor shining down on us for, you know, and that's just one of the many rewards, many of the many promises that God has in store for us when we're obedient to his word. You know, see, to the enemy, it may look like, oh, you know, she, she, oh, she's easy going. Oh, I didn't try that. I get away with it. Okay, let me try this now. You know, so they try one thing and then they try another thing. And the next thing you know, now you got to get ignorant on them, you know. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> God is pleased with us. You know, when you want to keep your mouth shut, even if, you know, even though you want to open it and scream and yell at the other person. You know, God is pleased with us when we can maintain self-control over situations and circumstances that normally would get us upset. God is pleased with us when we can, you know, uh, 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 endure unfair treatment, you know, and, and constantly say, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. But yet, and still, you still going to ask God, please, God, let them stop treating me unfair. You know, I don't like the way he treats me unfair. You have a right to ask God that. You know, don't overlook that part of the, you know, the, the defeating, the, the fight and the war. You know, you have a right. To, I give you permission to ask God, you know, to relieve that burden of whatever it is that you're facing. You know, to help you defeat that giant that seems to be bigger than life. Okay? Because God is pleased with you. Know, remind him, Lord, I, you know, I've been obedient to those in authority. I've been obedient to your word, you know. So I'm not asking you for this. You see what I'm saying? So, okay, God is pleased with us when we, you know, endure unfair treatment for doing what is right. You know, suffering as a slave to righteousness as opposed to suffering as a slave to sin. You know, and if you suffered, you know, as much as I suffered, honey, then, you know, you'd be like, oh, I ain't been through nothing. You know, because some people suffer more than others and some are still suffering. So you can't put it past. Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross for you and for me. So what makes you think that you and I are not going to suffer? You, you know, just as Jesus did. You know, and they telling how many years, no telling how many years you're going to suffer. Years, that's right, years. And I don't mean necessarily years where you be walking like a lame man or woman. You know, I mean suffering. You're going through emotional stuff, you know, mental anguish and whatnot. You know, you're just dealing with a subject matter that just won't seem to leave you alone. It, it leaves you alone for a little while and it comes back to haunt you again, you know. So anyway, I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You. And today I've been talking about this topic of you can't fight a spiritual battle in the physical. But you can fight a physical battle in the spiritual. And I was coming from my book, The Giant Inside of You is Bigger Than the Giant in Front of You. Okay, The Giant Inside of You is Bigger Than the Giant in Front of You. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this again on next week. And the book is available on barnesandnobles.com, www.barnesandnobles.com. It's also available on my website at booksgaloreandmore.com. It's also available on Kindle Publishing, Amazon Kindle Publishing dot, uh, uh, com, and it's also available on Lulu dot com, l u l u dot com. Okay, and if you order the book, I'll give you the CD, the DVD. I mean, that's included with it. You can either get the DVD or CD, whichever one you want. Okay, and I want to thank you for joining me today, and I ask you. Holler at us next week. We'll be talking about some more interesting topics. Holler.